with me is Charmaine Vega, and we're talking about an incredible show. Just talking to her before we got to you, I already learned so much. So I hardly can wait for me to share with you her story. Today's title, Happy Healthy Lifestyle. And wouldn't it be fun to eat right, to like it, to feel better, to sleep better, and to actually be excited about what you do and like even the way it tastes. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I was just thinking about, just imagine for a moment, if you would have been one of those 5,000 plus family people that Jesus fed on the mountain at that time, what would that have tasted like? It would have been amazing. And here they think it was sourdough bread. It was good. With that said, Charmaine, welcome to the show. And thank you so much for inviting me. I really enjoyed speaking with you earlier and having all the fun before the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you taught me something new because I eat maple syrup. And, and I love maple syrup, like the, the better syrup stuff because like my sweets. But you said something about cinnamon that really made a difference of that. And God even makes the, all that stuff, yes. right? And cinnamon so, comes, is the bark of a tree. Wow, that sounds wrong, but, but it's the bark of a tree. So, but cinnamon does something to kind of balance out that sugar spike. Yes, it will lower the glycemic index. And the glycemic index is what spikes in people who have diabetes or something of that nature. So in order to balance out the sugar, what you do is you add a little bit of cinnamon to it and it will help to lower that glycemic index. Wow. So yes, so you can still eat your maple syrup. It's good. It's good. It's good. My husband more thinks I have the maple syrup and some French toast, but, but it is good. It's good. And so, so, so what you do is put a little bit of cinnamon in the, when you're doing the batter for your French toast, and then take the maple syrup and add a little bit of cinnamon to that, and then drizzle it over it. So now you have even more an abundance wow. of cinnamon. Wow. And it is such an easy fix to walk away from those sugar spikes. You love cooking. You do a lot with salsas. You have all these incredible things that you're working with. Yes. So what did you get started in, in these incredible recipes and helping people out there, you know? That's a good question <laughs> because originally I started out as a special ed teacher and or before that I was a pre-med major, but then I switched to special education and I had students who were always running about in the community because the community that I taught in, it was an open campus. So I decided what can I do that's going to have them not run around the neighborhood because I would have to go look for them, okay? Mm. So I started making salsa with chips, a movie, and I knew where they were at lunchtime. They were all in my room. Wow. And one of the parents said, if you ever decide that you want to become um, a person who's making the salsa for money, then what I'm a broker for insurance company. So he became my insurance broker about three years later. And that was the beginning of me making salsa and starting my whole foundation of what it is that I do. Wow, now you even had your product in Costco, you were all over the place. So this is not a small thing. No. How did it grow in such abundance? And what is it all that you do? Because I know you help people help understand nutrition. You help them to take care of their bodies better, to feel better, but there's more to it than that. It's a lot more to it than that because I'm also a functional nutritionist. So I switched from special education to doing things that was in specifically in nutrition. I'm a fourth generation nutritionist. My mother is an herbalist. My grandmother was what they call a fire talker and she could put hands on people and talk fire. And so it would help heal, heal them so that they weren't sick. So I come from a long line of that's what we did. So God did. used her and worked right through her like that. Yes. Wow. And through my mother, and it has come down to me, where I did not know that. I did not know all of those things. It was something that I thought I was doing naturally, but yet it became something that I did. And I was taught how to cook without a cookbook or anything. From the time I was about 11 years old, I would cook gourmet meals. Just, yeah. Wow. So it... it spun out from that. And then my grandfather was a farmer, so I was always used to eating fresh produce, fresh foods, everything fresh. And there used to be a store in um, here in California, which is where we are, um, that was called Mrs. Gucci's. And Whole Foods bought them out. But one of the things I used to do when I was very young and first moved here is I would go there 
and ask them, oh, what is that and what's in it? I, even the Waldorf Hotel in New York, I would go there and say, oh, how did you make that? I could be allergic to it or something like that. Can you tell me the ingredients? And I would go and recreate those things. So I developed the skill of being able to look and taste things and recreating it. And then people started liking it. So I started mixing it with salsa and doing all those things and then wow. just did it naturally. Now your salsa seem to be really, really famous. Everybody keeps talking <laughs> about your spices and your salsa. What yes. makes yours different from all the others? What makes my salsa different is it does not have any added sugar because sugar is one thing that makes yeast and mold grow. And a lot of produce and foods out there that are canned, they will do that in order to change the flavor because what they're doing is they may be picking something out of season and it doesn't have the flavor. So oh, they add like that. tomatoes? Like tomatoes. Oh, okay. that's a big one. So that's what they do. And mine doesn't have that. And I don't add any preservatives. And I have never added any preservatives to any of my products. So even before it became popular not to have preservatives or additives, because you'll see a lot of um, things out there. It'll say no preservatives but they won't tell you they didn't have any additives. And additives can be a preservative, but they will say no preservatives, you see? So they kind of play on it. So that's why mine, I always say no preservatives and no additives. And I was able to create a formula where mine will preserve itself with no preservatives, wow. no additives, and my shelf life is greater than 30 days, which is unheard of for a fresh pico de gallo salsa. I'm listening. I'm like, wow, yeah. wow. If people want more information uh, about your salsa, do you have a website? Yes, it's Mama Vega, and that's M A M A V E G A dot com. So mamavega.com, dot okay. com, or they can go on there and wherever it says contact, they can just contact me directly, and they can get things that way from me. Wow. It, it, could you imagine eating something you really like, it even being good for your body, it makes you feel better. And I've actually heard even of people that start to eat really eat right, that it really helps with their health and, and that some people even get healed from all kinds of sicknesses they're dealing with just because of a small change that they're choosing to do for themselves. Jesus created food and it is good. And I can hardly wait for that banquet in heaven when we're going to heaven and we get the best meal of our life. But this seems to be close. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? to activate the person you were created to be. Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com. I wanna share with you a scripture that I never read before in the way that I'm gonna share with you this scripture today. It's out of Revelation 3, verse 20. Most people know it. And I always saw it as something intimate and special of Jesus getting close to me. But it talks about food. <laughs> so I wanted to share this with you because Charmaine Vega is with us, which is an incredible gourmet cook, but also in a way that you can create it simply. So this is what it says. Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come into you and feast with you and you will feast with me and feasting time is partying time and partying time is good food and good food is what you do with friends when you are together and to the one who conquers I will give the privilege of sitting with me on my throne just as I conquered and sat down with my father on his throne the one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying now to the churches. One way when you really are able to connect with people and working with people is when you have a clear mind. And when that clear mind is able to release itself and connects to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit with your spirit. And when you connect those twos and when you tune in together and become intimate and personal, he will reveal secrets to you in a way that seems so simple. And one of those secrets the other day was when the Lord told me to put cinnamon on my oatmeal. And I am like, what? But it tasted delicious. And then I'm learning here from Charmaine that cinnamon is actually really, really good for us. 
So when you start to see that God even cares about what you eat and that he wants it to be good, everything changes. And you started doing that, Charmaine. You started tuning in and listening to Holy Spirit, cooking basically with Holy Spirit, right. getting these ingredient ideas, built this huge business out of it, like, like over millions of dollars you know, of revenue coming in and going out. But then it all fell apart. Yes. What happened that that could have gone wrong? Um, the part that fell apart for me, what I did not do, and in hindsight I can see what I didn't do, is I didn't track my own money. Ah. And because I wasn't tracking it and was letting my partner handle everything, he was then able to take the money and put it somewhere else because I was going and getting the account and so focused on that. And whenever I would say, you know, what's going on with the account? And he would say, you know, well, you focus on what you're doing and let me do what I'm doing because if you're paying attention to what you're doing and what I'm doing, it's going to slow everything down. Logical, right? That makes perfect sense. Yeah, it makes total it, sense. It, it makes, yeah. total, total sense. makes total sense. And I was a teacher at the time, so what did I know about really running a business? This came to mind for me to ah. do. He ran businesses and he knew what to do, so let me turn that over to you. Well, I found out that it, I turned it over to him, all right, and I, there was nothing I could do about it from a legal situation because at the time my company was not a corporation, it was a sole proprietorship. So all the money that oh. he took was not considered embezzled. So he took the money? He took the money. He took it out? He took it all. All of it? All of it. How did you find out? Because I got suspicious when he was telling me, well, we can't buy labels and we can't buy this. And I'm like, why can't we? So I had to borrow money from my sister and my company. I had never borrowed any money to even get the company But started. you saw the revenue. I was saw that it was coming in, but I wasn't tracking it to see how much was costing for the shipping, how much was costing for so this. You didn't know. So I didn't really know. I knew how much was coming in, but I didn't know the other costs. Even though in my mind, I'm calculating it. I'm like, it's not making sense. It's not making sense. So finally, one day I went and looked at the bank accounts and I saw where money was being transferred into his personal account. Oh my goodness. So yes. That was a hit probably. It was devastating. It so was devastating. The confrontation took place and then everything else, what happened? Um, what I did is I went to my companies and um, all the stores that I was in and I withdrew all my products. Why? Because I knew that I had to go to court and I knew that in the system that we deal with, it's a man-run business. And if I had that much money coming in, and I'm going to say he took all of this, it would have been, well, you have all of this coming in. What is it that you're trying to get him to do? And I still ran across that because when I went to court, the judge, which was a female judge, she said, but what did he do to you? But, but you had the evidence. You had the proof. I had everything. But she was looking at he didn't physically hit you. So she didn't look at the bigger picture? No. So you lost the entire company because of it? I did not lose the company. I didn't get the money, but I went back to court. And when I went back to court, they awarded me the money. But that's like getting, getting you know, blood from a turnip, okay, yeah. so to speak, because I, I haven't received the money, although I was awarded the money. I was awarded my house only to find out after I got the award of my house that he had then put a lien on my property in order for him to take money from my house and had oh. me listed as a resident relative, not that I was the owner. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so oh. I ended up losing. Very well thought out on the other <laughs> side. Now, Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yes. But Jesus gives it to you in abundance. Yes. So often what happens at this moment, bitterness, unforgiveness, Pain, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, hatred, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. When you found out all that, you had two choices. Doing whatever Satan wanted for your life or saying there's more to life. Jesus has a better plan. And how do you even step into that? Um, I decided that I was going to look at it as I could help other people because when I talk to other women, I found out that they had experienced things far greater than me. They may have been sex trafficked. They may have been beaten up. One woman who is a mentor to me, she had been stabbed seven times. Oh, wow. Um, so when I looked at what they had gone through, mine was materialistic and the psychological and the emotional, yes, but it wasn't the physical and it wasn't the sexual. So when I reached out to the other women, I found out that they had a lot more that was a problem, but because I did nutrition, I knew what I could do to 
somewhat stay focused. And so I used food in order to help me to remain focused. And then I decided I was going to let all of that go. Wow. 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 When you (laughs) learn to handle things in a better way, everything turns around. Some of you, something got stirred up right now. I can see it. So I encourage you, will you call us so we can pray for you and just come along alongside of you? 855-515-5550 or go to our website, Barb tv.org because know this god wants you to be in the upper hand and not lose it all we'll be right back TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories, and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life, and He wants you to have all the benefits. With me is Charmaine Vega and her partner in the business that was doing so well. They, she even had her product in, in Costco. It was doing fantastic. There was embezzlement taking place and then everything changed just like that. But God's not done. If God is for you, who can be against you? And that's what happened with you. Yes, it did. Because you, you lost a lot, but you went smart about it in the process. What was the benefit of that? The benefit is, is um, I ended up writing a book. And um, how that even happened is I came across a publishing company that fights domestic violence and sex trafficking. And I decided to write a chapter, just one little chapter about what happened. And that spawned into me doing a magazine and doing a cookbook. Wow. And <laughs> being on the stage and being a speaker. and working with other people specifically for health and nutrition and trying to turn people's lives around through health and nutrition. That's such a mouthful. I almost (laughs) want you to say it again because it was so loaded with good stuff. Now for you to step into making a cookbook, making a magazine and helping people and coming alongside of those that were abused. You were not physically abused, right? but you were not recognized basically in the court system for what was done to you and your company. That's correct. So everything got so twisted and so weird. So what was your motto this whole time to get yourself through it? My motive was, my father always told me that if you have a gift and you don't share that gift with others, God will take that gift back from you because it was given to you as a gift and meant for you to share with others. Because I had an education and because I knew how to fight in the court system because of the people I had who surrounded me, which were attorneys and you know different people who were in the system of fighting with people who were domestically abused, I then felt that I had the power of that to help others. And in helping others, I was helping myself. That's true. That's true. When I had an eating disorder and I was no longer uh, allowed by people, when that finally came out, you know, I was no longer allowed to function in those ministries I was part of because of my addiction. It didn't help, but there was one that they couldn't really find a replacement for. And that was me working and helping teenagers in juvenile hall. And guess what got me through? Me ministering to people in the midst of having to have to go to the recovery myself. It helped them and it helped me. And out of all that today came Adopt a Champion, the program that we work with in our ministry to help people. So what you're saying right there, it's amazing that the medicine of helping people while you're in recovery is probably one of the best things and Christ will actually help you grow yourself through all that. Is that what I'm hearing you say? And that's exactly what you're hearing because when you're going through these kind of things, and I would suspect even you going through that, you may be ashamed yourself because you feel like I'm smart. 
you know, how could this happen? How could I allow these things to happen? And you don't want the neighbors to know. And that was the actual chapter that I yeah. did is I said, I don't want the neighbors to know, but it has two meanings because he was the one who made that comment to one of my friends. And he said, I don't want the neighbors to know. But at that moment, that was my defining moment because wow. I realized I was his shield. I didn't want the neighbors to know because I was ashamed. He didn't want the neighbors to know because he had a facade of ah. now pretending that he was this perfect individual. The secret is in, the hiding continues, and it's the most poisonous that the devil can use anywhere he wants. Exactly. Yeah, that's going to be stopped. So today you have become very successful, and just having you for an hour in my house, <laughs> I am like, you know, it changes you because you do it in such a way that it's a fun way. So you're doing a lot of herbs and everything else. Share with me a little bit more about that. Well, my mother is an herbalist, so I grew up with knowing the benefit of herbs and what they do. My mother also teaches the Bible, so I know, and her company is God's Herbals. So I like it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so that's what she calls her. So I grew up with knowing what the herbs can do, and because the FDA and all the regulations they have, I can't say this will heal you or this will do these things. Right. So what I do is I use it in my cooking. I use the spices and the certain ones that I blend will help you digest certain foods or certain things like that. But I don't say that's what it will do is I say, oh, let's put this together and see how it tastes or let's do this. Ah. So I use it for healing purposes. I use it for focus purpose, depending on what a person needs from me. And I've also worked with another company now that that's what they do. And it, it goes down to the cellular level. So I know what that can do to help a person. And I use it with women and children because my specialty was special education and dealing with children who have ADD and autism. Wow. So what does that do to, to children that are dealing with autism or different things? It How does it help them? It helps them to focus without having to take all the medications. Wow. And that medications with its side effects. So you, are you telling me that God has created natural things in life, <laughs> natural foods that actually will help people, but we're ignorant and we don't know how to apply them to our lives? That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. Oh, wow. That is yes. so simple. I'm, and it's, it is that simple. It really is that simple. And kind of like your wonderful sourdough bread. <laughs> Yeah, the other day people said, uh, we love your sourdough bread, we want your sourdough bread. And I was like, do I want to be known for my sourdough bread? Absolutely. Or for God, but it should be both probably. Yes. It should yes. be both. Now, you're doing a lot of with spices and with salsa, but you're also working more like that. And the typical question that people are thinking about today, everybody's concerned about COVID. Yes. Everybody. There's people that want to take the COVID vaccine and there's people that don't want to take the COVID vaccine. It's both spectrums of the sign. Yes. Now, what would you recommend for COVID? Because if you say God created all this beautiful stuff, does God have a remedy for those that are and are not vaccinated how to deal with COVID? Absolutely. And that, I would say, boosts your immune system naturally. It goes back to what are you eating? And I push organic. The reason I push organic is because it doesn't have all the pesticides and chemicals and all that kind of stuff in that's going to um, harm your immune system. Your immune system is really your small intestine. So if you're eating food and it's going through the small intestine and it's creating tears and all kinds of things because of the chemicals, it's also creating brain fog where you can't think, oh, well, maybe I can get this. If you eat the right foods, your body will absorb what it needs and it will protect itself and it has a way of regenerating and healing itself. Hmm. So whether you take the vaccine or you don't take the vaccine, either way, you need to be boosting your immune system naturally or balancing it. Now they often say take vitamin D or C or, or specific things. What is your recommendation with that? My recommendation is you need it in combination. So you can have vitamin C, vitamin D, and all these other things. But my recommendation, and this is my personal recommendation, and it's been scientifically proven, it's, it's, it's actually ProTandem or from Life Vantage because their stuff will help you all the way down to the cellular level. These other things in certain capsules, they will burn up in your stomach because of the hydrochloric acid that's naturally in your stomach. So when it gets to the stomach, it burns up. This particular company, the way they make everything, it's slow release, so as it's going down the tracks, it releases a little, releases a little, releases a little, and so now you end up getting at least 60 to 80%, and mm. in 30 days, it reduces 
the um, free radicals that you would have that causes aging and everything else by 40%. That has wow. been proven. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been proven. That is great. So um, just one thing, if you could give a word to our viewer right now in just, just a couple of sentences, what would it be? I would have to use a quote that um, I always use on my stationery and everything else. And that is one my father gave me. And it is no means not that way. So whenever something happens, you have to look at where do you want to go? And when you focus on the light, the dark falls away. Wow. You don't even see it. Um, if anybody wants to get to your website, yes. what is your website? It's mamavega.com. And mama is spelled M-A-M-A -A, and then V-E-G-A.com. It was a great, fun learning experience to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Wow, are you, are you like me? I was like, I want more. Well, you are thinking even possibly of wanting prayer or something else, or you have questions. I would love to connect with you. Go to 855-555-5150. I just messed that up. Just look at the bottom of the screen. 855-515-5550 or go to bartv.org. And know this, God created great food. Have a great day. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak, to activate the person you were created to be. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com. You're looking for love in relationships or you're looking in love even from your parents? And it sometimes comes in a different way. You expect it just like the movies, absolutely perfect. I realized, oh, I started with that song and he was wooing me into this revelation that God is a perfect father. What was that for you like? Did you feel like it was your fault oh. of certain circumstances that were happening for you to start searching for love? Impressions that were allowing my heart to be seen, heard, even in that space, just me and God. Now, did you know God as a child already? Growing up, yes, we were going to church and then I really got excited about getting involved more, uh, youth groups and everything like that.